Hi, today we're going to go over uh, a quick start guide for those of you who are, who are new to gouging with the Opus One Gouger. Uh, the important thing about using any gouger is you want the cane to be prepared appropriately for the machine. And with this gouger, it needs to be cut to a specific length and a specific width so that it works best with the blade and guide configuration. So if you look here at the piece of cane, if you measure across the distance here to here, that is eight millimeters. Okay. Now, if it's wider than that, then it will actually touch further up in the guide and may be touching the guide where the blade is already tucked away behind the guide and cause rubbing. And so if it's eight millimeters, that'll prevent that from happening. So now the piece of cane is cut to a specific length for the Opus One so that it can use the, the blade grip system of the Opus One. And what that does is if you put the piece of cane over here under the left clip and put it back down on the piece of cane like that. It's against the cane stop over here and the left clip is on the cane. Then over here, I'll push it down to the bed and place the right clip on the cane. But right now, the cane is longer than the bed by about a 30 second of an inch or so. And so when I pull the grip system pull knob here, you hear a click. That is this clip pushing the cane down into the bed. So now the cane is being held firmly by the clips and by the cane grip system in the bed. And this prevents the cane from moving around in the bed when it's gouging. And it gives you more accurate results. And that's the basics of how to prepare the cane. Now, when you're gouging, I have the piece of cane now in the bed and I will put, uh, I use WD-40 and spray a little bit on the rod over here and over here. Then move the carriage back and forth like this and that works that lubricant into the rod and it makes it so that it goes back and forth very easily. So the first thing I'll do is I will take the carriage and I put my thumb in this little depression right here next to the mount here. And these fingers are just on the carriage here. Now the left thumb is on the, the front face over here and provides a downward force on the carriage as it's gouging. And it should require a lot, but you wanna make sure that you have that that's the main focal point. And these, piece, these fingers are just out of the way back here. So what I do is I back the cane up all the way and then I put a little bit of pressure and I gouge like this. And every once in a while, just pull the cane out of the carriage there. Okay, after about five or six or so passes, I'll wanna flip the cane because this is a double radius gouge. And again, do the same thing here. Put the cane against the left cane stop Clip down, and you hear the click. That's where the cane again goes down to the bottom of the bed. Now you wanna make sure that you do that on each time you remove the cane and put it back, because if not, it'll be sticking up in the air over here and it'll gouge too thin, because the cane will not be down against the bed. So once I flipped it, I'll close the carriage, draw back. And as it's gouging, you'll notice that the cane is coming up on the inside surface, the part of the blade that's closer toward the inside of the carriage but it's a double radius, it's not gouging down the center. Um, but the blade is shaped that way so that it actually has a dominant edge and a secondary edge for cutting. So it's, it, it works properly that way. So when it finishes, the two curves overlap, tangent in the center, and you have a, a true double radius curve, but without a widow's peak in the middle. And so it's a true tangent joining of the curves in the center. So I'll keep doing this. Do about five passes each time, making sure I have no cane in the bed as well when I put the piece of cane back inside there. No, no chips. Okay. And I'll do this until I get all the way to the bottom. And when it bottoms out, I'll always flip it one more time. Because that extra can that was there may allow it to go a little bit deeper on the flip side. And I take all the can out of there so I can see if anything new comes up. And a little bit came up. And so if anything comes up at all, I always flip it one more time. Because that little bit that came up may have kept the cane from completing further down on the on the side before. 
Make sure there's no, nothing in there so I can see if new stuff comes up. And that looks good. Okay, and taking the piece of can out, you may have wondered about that too. What I do is I'll pull this clip back with my, my uh, middle finger here, and then my index finger, pull this one back, and then pull the, the cane grip system with these two fingers back, and then I just take this finger and pull out like that. And it becomes pretty quick. So you can see, putting it in, lining it up, taking it out, it's pretty quick. Okay, so now I'll take my dial indicator, and I want to take a measurement and make sure that I'm measuring 60 in the center, and roughly behind the ears will be about 48 or so. It'll be slightly under 40 on the very, very edge of a piece of cane that is eight millimeters wide. So I'll measure the center and I'm 60 in the center. And I go down to the sides and about where it's gonna be about 48 there. And what I'll do is up to check this, I'll actually shape it. And I wanna measure behind the ears on the very edge of the cane below the point where the ears meet. So in other words, you'll, you'll be cutting the zeros off when you when you wrap the reed. So that, that point out there is considered the side of the gouge measurement. And so that should be about 48 or so at that point. And so um, looking pretty good. Okay, so at this point, I will shape it up, wrap it up and make it into a reed. So if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, and you can see on the website what my email address would be. And I look forward to talking to you more about other new things with the Abyss One Goucher and any new tools that I have coming up that are kind of fun to play with. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.